as to interrupt a farewell between brothers now prepare to meet your fate no pardon me you were ready for it from the start as Zeriosu and Chisuria began moving, Cositus flourished God-slaying slash emperor and asked, state your names. Chisuria Shasha. Zeriosu Shasha. I will remember you warriors. Also, I apologize ahead of time for not using the weapons i and all my hands it island not that i wish to scorn you but you are simply not strong enough to warrant there use what a shame indeed here i come diamond suit diamond suit diamond suit the two of them lunged at cositus splashing across the marsh the uncoordinated timing of their attacks baffled cositus the two of them did not enter his range at the same time shisuria was the first to do so sensing a scheme cositus awaited their next move since shisuria was the first to enter his strike zone Cositus carefully studied Chisuria's next move. Chisuria stopped just before Cositus could reach him and earthbind and cast a spell. Countless chains formed of mud leapt at Cositus, and Zeriosa broke into a wild sprint. He had even hidden frost pain behind his back so his opponent would not be able to gauge his attack range. Chisuria's declaration that I'm almost out of mana was merely a ruse to deceive Cositus. If he had taken the bait, perhaps he might have been bound by the mystic chains and been hit by Zerius's charge from behind. However tough their opponent's exoskeleton was, he should still be able to break through if he poured all his strength into the edge. With that in mind, Zerius had abandoned defense to focus on the attack, and the resulting strike should have been quite strong. He seems quite confident in his sword. Cositus could understand how he felt, because much like him, Cositus felt strongly about the weapons he owned. In particular, the sword he now wielded, which had once been used by his creator, was especially significant to him. Therefore, despite how lopsided it would make the battle, Cositus insisted on doing battle with God slaying slash emperor in hand as a sign of his supreme respect. However, they had made a miscalculation, which was that their opponent was Cositus, guardian of the fifth floor of the great underground tomb of Nazareth. My defenses cannot be breached by someone whose level island below mine. The chains of mud rebounded off Cositus an instant before they reached him, reverting to regular dirt and sinking back into the mire. Low tier spells could not pierce Cositus's magical defenses. Icy burst. As the shout rang out, a vortex of ivory fog swirled out and surrounded Cositus. A futile effort. Cositus was immune to cold damage, so as the gentle breeze of the supercooled mist blew around him, he patiently waited for Zeriusu and Chisuria to enter his attack range. Soon enough, the moment he had been waiting for arrived. However, Cositus hesitated briefly. He thought, can my foe be stopped just by cutting off his head? In the face of Zerius's full attack, Cositus did not think that mere decapitation would stop his advance. The mental image of a headless body rushing him appeared in his mind. In that case, he ought to chop his hands off first, and then his head. No, that wouldn't be clean enough. Best to finish him off in one stroke. Zerius charged with all his strength, devoting every fiber of his being to the attack, but he was still too slow for Cositus. A black shadow appeared amidst the white mist, Zeriosu thrust his sword, 
and Cositus caught it lightly between his fingers, like before. Cositus did not feel any cold from his fingertips. Perhaps Zarius knew that Cositus was immune to the cold, and did not use the ability. The charge was fast, but he had blocked it so easily. That puzzled Cositus. However, those doubts faded in an instant. His foe's life would end with a swing of God-slaying slash Emperor, so there was nothing more to think about. And then there would only be one of them left. So it was just an unplanned charge, then. Just as a somewhat disappointed Cositus was about to strike, he changed his mind. I see. Oh. With a mighty roar, the great sword hacked down through the freezing mist which hung in the air. Shisuria's swing carried a gale in its wake, which dispersed the frozen fog. The earth bind, Zarius's charge, icy burst, all of them were decoys. While he had to be wary of Zarius's stabbing him with frost pain, Shisuria's overhead chop with the great sword was more damaging, so that must have been their true intention. However, surprise attacks ought to be conducted in silence. As long as they could not erase the sound they made as they ran across the marsh, it could not truly qualify as an unexpected attack. Cositus was puzzled. Was this really worth taking cold damage? Or was it just a meaningless struggle? Still, it was true that his foe had entered his strike zone. Now that Zarius's weapon was within his grasp, there was nothing to fear from him. Only the order in which they died would change. Having decided that, Cositus swung God-slaying slash Emperor. It struck. Shisuria was cloven in half along with his great sword. Before the body could hit the ground, Cositus withdrew his blade, planning to attack Zariusu, diamond suit, diamond suit, diamond suit, and then, the fingers grasping frost pain slipped. Surprised, Cositus looked at his fingers to see what had made it slide forward. He saw the bright red of blood amidst the white mist hanging in the air. In an instant, Cositus realized why his fingers had slipped. Blood? He was confused. He wondered when it had gotten there, and then as he saw Zarius's face through the mist, it suddenly dawned on him. The blood smeared on his face was not to paint himself, but to coat his sword. Neither had Icy Burst been intended to hurt Cositus, or conceal Shisuria's form. Its purpose had been to hide the blood coating the sword. So was keeping it behind his back. When he blocked Zarius's attack, Cositus had done so with his fingers. Zarius remembered it, and had bet on the slim chance that he would do it again. Thus he had gone to these lengths to set up the battlefield to pull it off. Just then, a flash of lightning surged through Cositus's brain. So that was why his thrust felt so weak. No wonder. There's no way the plan to lubricate the sword with blood so it could pierce through would work every time. In order to create this chance, he slowed his strike to make me think it was easy to catch. The blade slowly slid over, inching towards Cositus's pale blue body. Now that Zarius had thrown his full strength and even body weight into the thrust, not even Cositus could stop it, not with two blood-stained fingers. If he had grasped it further away from him, there might be something else he could do. But at this short range, he was out of options. Cositus was so moved that he trembled. While it had relied on a bit of luck, this was an attack which had required multiple gambles, each of which had paid off. The most important thing was that without Shisuryu, none of this would have been possible. Shisuryu should not have understood Zarius's gambit, but as an elder brother, he had placed all his trust in his younger brother, to the point of sacrificing his own life. That pointless surprise attack and shouting were all to divert Cositus's attention from his brother for just a moment. A single moment. And for just a single moment, as Zeriosu was forcing frost pain at him with all his might, Cositus's mandibles trembled. Truly. Marvelous, and so the blade struck Cositus's body, only to deflect lightly off. His body, which glowed a faint blue, did not have so much as a scratch on it. This was the result of the impassable gulf that separated the highest level NPCs of Nazarek from mere lizard men. Forgive. Me but. I possess. A skill. Which. Briefly. Negates. Weakly enchanted. Weapon. Attacks. Once. 
I activate. It your. Attack. Island. Useless. That blow had been well struck, and Cositus felt that leaving a scar as a mark of respect for these warriors would be appropriate. However, he was under the eyes of a supreme being, and he could not do so in his position as a guardian. Cositus deliberately took one step back, splashing up the mud and staining his beautiful blue body. It was just a single step. There was no meaning to it. Backing up would not have made any difference to him. Zeriusu would still die, and Cositus would still win. However, that step back was a sign of praise from the strong, Cositus, to the weak, Zeriusu. Zeriusu smiled, in the way someone did when he knew full well what sort of fate was in store for him, yet ran towards it anyway. As he did, Cositus swung his sword down. Part 3, that was a spectacular battle, Ain said in praise to Cositus, who was kneeling before him. Thank. You. However, I trust you understand that while we we used the stick this time, you must employ the carrot in the future. You are not to rule them through fear. I understand. After Ains nodded, he looked to the other guardians in the room. Very good. Now then, listen well, you guardians. Like I said earlier in the throne room, Cositus will administer the lizard man village. If he needs help, I hope you will give it to him. Cositus, I hope you will foster a deeply rooted loyalty to Nazarek in the lizard men. I also hope that you will cultivate the growth of talented members of their species. I will leave these tasks to you. If you need wings of ascension or other special items, let me know. I will also lend you a powered suit for the time being. Players could change their character races in Yggdrasil, but that did not imply that one could freely change race. Some requirements had to be met for the change, and the changes were irreversible. Part of the requirements were items. Someone who wanted to become an elder lich would need a book of the dead. Someone who wanted to become an imp would need a fallen seed. The angel wing item which Ains had mentioned was used for becoming an angel. Ains had mentioned it because he thought that it might be possible to change races in that manner. I shall count on you. When the time comes, Ain Sama may I know how you wish to deal with those. Lizard men? Those lizard men? Yes. The. Ones. Called. Zeriusu. And. Shisuryu. The two who fought to the end. Their corpses should still be in the marsh. However, why did he bring them up? Hmm. Recover their corpses and use them for raw materials, when I'm not making undead with my skills. That. Would be a bit of a waste. Oh, why is that? Are they that valuable? Ains had watched the battle through the mirror of remote viewing and saw an overwhelming victory. Nothing about them recommended themselves to his eye. They might be weak. However, I saw there. Fearless. Warrior. Spirit. Turning. Them. Into. Raw. Materials. Island. A bit. Of. A waste. I feel. That. They. Could. Become. Stronger. Perhaps. Even. Exceeding. Our expectations. Ain Sama. I believe you have not yet conducted any practical experiments with resurrecting the dead. Could you not do so? With them? Does he like those lizard men? 
In all honesty, Ains did not feel anything when he heard things like warrior spirit. He had heard of terms like killing intent in manga and light novels, but he thought nothing of them. It was kind of like how Narborough responded with, ah, so that's what it is, oh and so on while he was lecturing her. Similarly, Ains had no idea what this warrior's empathy business was about. That was because Ains had originally been a normal salaryman, despite his current state. An average citizen who actually knew about a warrior's spirit, or killing intent, would probably be considered dangerous. Now, he could understand something like a bureaucrat's spirit instead. I see, so it would be a shame then? However, when Ains heard about Cositus's approval of the lizard men, his true thoughts were, well, you might call it a shame, but I have no idea what that means. Still, when he thought about it, Cositus's words made a lot of sense. He had wanted to find a place to experiment with resurrection anyway, and Ains felt that using them for those experiments would be very beneficial. In addition, unlike how Cositus had been waffling around in the throne room, he had now proposed a useful solution for them. If that was a sign of improvement, then he had passed with flying colors. He paused briefly to think, and then Ains thought of his other exceptional subordinates. He thought of them as they stood around him, in a suitably subservient posture, silent and unmoving. Albedo, what is your opinion? It would be the same as yours, Ains Sama. What do you think, Demiurge? I feel whatever you decide would be best, Ain Sama. How about you, Shaltir? Like Demiurge, I shall abide by your ruling, Ain Sama. Aura? Yeah, I'm with everyone else. Mare? Ah, 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 yes. I think so too. They might as well not have answered at all. Ain's head ached. Ains thought hard and finally realized something. Perhaps the guardians did not think it was a big deal. In other words, no matter how he decided, they did not feel there would be any major benefits or drawbacks. Of course, he had to consider their respective situations. Sometimes, problems might arise due to their varying circumstances. Simply put, when a rich person said, oh, that sum's not a problem, one would immediately doubt the truth of those words. In other words, it was the result of differing values and priorities. I wasted my time asking, still, that means resurrecting the lizard men should be fine, right? I was planning to think carefully on this, because I've made too many mistakes recently. With no recourse, Ains had to ponder the merits and demerits of the situation by himself. We have decided to subordinate the lizard man village to our rule, but is there a suitable candidate for leader? Do they have a group that manages the entire village? No, but there is a person who is suitable to be the village's representative. Oh? Who is that? It island. The. White. Lizard man. Who. Did. Not. Take. Part. I in the. Fighting. She. Appears. To have druidic powers her then hm well that is workable she should be worth using ains thought we could also use her to keep an eye on the others however having her execute ains plan might undermine cositus's plan to administer the village that being the case what should he do at this point a flash of inspiration struck ains wouldn't it be faster to ask her directly Granted, I didn't get any usable answers just now. Ains shared his plans with Cositus, who replied in the affirmative. Given Cositus's reaction, the fact that he might be caving into his master's wishes could not be ruled out. However, after glancing at Demiurge and Albedo, he noted that neither of them seemed to be acting out of the ordinary, which reassured Ains that he was doing the right thing. Very well. How soon before she can be brought here? Forgive. Me if I have overstepped myself, but I sensed that you might wish to see her, and so I ordered her to wait 
I-N-A, nearby. Room. Ains glanced at Demiurge, who shook his head. Nicely done indeed. He's settled the matter without anyone's instructions, and it doesn't look like someone else gave him the idea. Ains wondered if this was how a superior felt, when he saw his subordinate grow as a person. He was all smiles, although one could not tell his expression given that he was a skeleton. No no no, you've done well, Cositus. Wasting time is foolish, and your judgment was correct. All right, bring her in, then. Ah, please wait. What's the matter, Aura? While they are not strangers, meeting them in an unremarkable place like this will damage your reputation, Ain Sama. I feel you should receive her in Nazarick's throne room. The other guardians nodded, with the exception of Mare. My apologies. I had not considered that. Please forgive me. Hmm. I hadn't thought of that at all. With that in mind, Ains wondered how he should resolve this problem. At that moment, he remembered the words from back then. In that case, Aura. Yes. Did you not once say that you built this place in imitation of Nazareth? You were right. Cositus, bring her over. I shall meet her here. Ai Ains Sama. Aura, that's enough. Albedo. Not knowing why she had been told to stand down, Aura looked at Albedo, her face red with protest. However, Albedo merely glanced at her, and then paid her no heed, looking at the main door instead. It was Demiurge who answered the angry Aura. Ain Sama would not make a mistake. That being the case, if Ain Sama says this place is as good as Nazareth, then, it can't be wrong, Shaltir continued. Well, I don't think I'm totally correct, and I hope they don't think that way. Still, it ended up helping me out here. Aura, I shall say it again. I feel that this place, built by you, one of my most trusted subordinates, is as good as Nazareth, even if it is still a work in progress. Do you understand? Thank you, Ain Sama. Aura bowed in gratitude, and so did the other guardians. There's no need to be so moved, I guess. I feel so embarrassed now. In that case, bring her over, Cositus. At. Once. Diamond suit, diamond suit, diamond suit, Cositus immediately brought the white lizard man to the room. She knelt with her head bowed before Ains. What is your name? I am Crush Lulu, representative of the lizard men. O oh, Supreme Overlord of Death, Ains Olgaon Sama. Well, that's pretty far-fetched. Ains wondered who had come up with that title, but in the end he decided to adopt the calm, poised attitude of a king. M.M., welcome. Thank you, Gaon Sama. Please accept the utmost loyalty of we, the lizard men. Hmm. Ains studied Crush carefully. These scales are beautiful. They glittered under the light of the magical lighting. I wonder how they'd feel, Ains wondered out of curiosity. Just as Ains lost himself in his thoughts, he realized that Crush's shoulders were trembling. Cositus should have disabled his cold emanating skills, so it was probably due to some other reason. As he thought on the matter, Ains realized that her shuddering made perfect sense. If Ains said that he was displeased with the lizard men, every single one of them would be deprived of their heads. Therefore, Crush was hanging on to every word Ains said. Given that she was jumpy and nervous as it was, Ains' unnatural silence would have filled her with terror. Ains was not the sort of person who amused himself by tormenting the weak. He could commit atrocities for the great underground tomb of Nazareth, but his mental state had not degraded to the point where he would perform such acts as part of daily life. The lizard men shall live under my banner from this day forth. However, Cositus will be ruling you in my place. I trust there are no problems with that? No, that's it then. You may return. Eh? May I? Crush exclaimed in surprise from where she was bowing. She had thought Ains would demand the moon from her, so this utter betrayal of her expectations brought that reaction forth from her. You may go back for the time being, Crush Lulu. The lizard men will soon enter a period of prosperity. Your future generations will give thanks with all their hearts that they were allowed to swear themselves to me. 
You are too kind. We are already deeply grateful for the mercy you have shown us despite our opposition to a supreme being like yourself. Ain slowly rose from his throne and then approached Crush. He knelt down and put a hand on her shoulder. Surprised, Crush shuddered, and the vibration traveled up Ain's hand. Also, I have a special request for you. May I know what it is? If it is within my power, then I shall strive to fulfill your desires as your faithful servant, Gaudano. The idea was not originally mine, but if you agree, I shall restore Zeriusa to life in exchange. As he spoke the name he had heard from Cositus, Crush suddenly raised her head, the very picture of shock. Ain smugly studied Crush's face. She seemed to be trying to hide her feelings, but her expression changed by the moment. Lizard men and humans had very different facial expressions, so Ains could not be certain what was there, but at the very least he could pick out joy, anger, and sorrow. Is that even possible? I possess power over life and death. Death is nothing more than a state of being to me. After hearing Crush's almost imperceptible words, Ains continued, It is like being sick or poisoned, but I cannot extend one's lifespan. Perhaps it would be impossible to do so through conventional means, but it might be possible with wish upon a star, but now is not the time for such things. Then, what do you wish of your loyal slave? My body, perhaps? Ains was dumbfounded. No, that's a bit too. As if. Even if I did desire that sort of thing, it's not as though I'd go so far as to breed with a reptile. Having nearly said that, Ains struggled to maintain his image. He decided to ignore the sound of grinding teeth that came from nearby. Ahem. Of course not. It is simple, I want you to observe the lizard men, and see if any of them are going to betray me. No lizard man will betray you. After hearing Crush's firm reply, Ains smiled coldly to her. I am not nearly stupid enough to believe that. Indeed, I am not mighty enough to know what every lizard man thinks, but if they are sufficiently human-like, treachery will be common enough. Therefore, I would like someone to quietly keep an eye on them. Crush resumed her blank expression, which made Ains worry that he had phrased it poorly. While he had wanted to resurrect Zeriusu from the beginning, Ains wanted her to ask for it, and thus bind her to him with chains of obligation. What should he do if she refused? If I'd known, I shouldn't have been so greedy. Well, I guess there's no point crying over spilt milk. A miracle hangs before you right now, but it will not last forever. If you do not seize the moment, it will be gone forever. Crush's face seemed to be twitching. It is not as though I am going to conduct some horrific ceremony. Does resurrection magic not exist in this world? I am simply going to use a spell like that. That's legendary. As Crush hesitated over whether or not to speak, Ains spoke to her in tender tones, but with an arrogant attitude. Crush, I would like you to think about what is most important to you. Ains watched Crush's eyes as his words slowly got to her. It felt like he was about to clinch a sail. After this, Ains would need to impress upon Crush that the miracle he provided did not come free of charge. After all, people would suspect free things, but their suspicions would be eased if there was a reasonable fee attached to them. I want you to secretly observe your fellow lizardmen. Depending on how things turn out, you may be faced with a dangerous choice. In addition, to guard against your treachery, I will cast a certain spell on Zeriusu when I resurrect him. It is a spell that will instantly kill Zeriusu if I judge that you have betrayed me. It might be hard on you, but it ought to be worth it if you can get Zeriusu back, am I wrong? That said, there's no such spell. Ain stood up, as though to say that he had said his piece, and then he spread his arms. Crush looked at Ains with a tormented expression in her eyes. Ah yes, when Zeriusu is resurrected, I will tell him that he was recalled to life because he was useful to me. I can guarantee that your name will not come up. Well then, Crush Lulu, make your choice. This is the last chance you have to return your beloved Zeriusu to your side. What will you do? Will you seize this opportunity, or abandon it? Decide. Ain slowly extended a hand to Crush as he looked to the guardians and said, If she refuses, none of you are to do anything. Well then, Crush Lulu, what is your answer? Clone. 
New paste. Few persons can be made to believe that it is not quite an easy thing to invent a method of secret writing which shall baffle investigation. Yet it may be roundly asserted.